Thanks for staying with us now with the announcement of President Mohamed Buhari to gradually ease the lockdown imposed on Lagos, Ogun and Abuja. We can't help but wonder if this was a well thought through decision given that the numbers of new infections from the COVID-19 disease are constantly on the rise. Um, how would corporate organizations approach the concern of their workers as a lot of people have these genuine fears? Now, Saigiri Onaiwo is a seasoned human resource enterprise development consultant with over 19 years experience. Osage demonstrates expertise in developing and implementing HR strategies, which ensures a healthy workplace efficiency and e effectiveness while building and maintaining healthy stakeholder relationship focused on accelerating business growth. He's currently engaged as a consultant for a leading telecommunication firm. Thanks for joining us, Osage. Thank you for having me. All right, remember you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8034 Osage, if you can hear me, thank you again for joining us. Um, when the president came out to announce the lockdown, ease of the lockdown for Lagos, Ogun, and Abuja, what was the first thought that came to your mind? Wow. Um, so the truth of the matter is that um, the dilemma Lagos State, Ogun State, and the other states have been facing has been a, a tripartite one. Um, whether it's the health issues, the economic hardship, social economic hardship, or liberty. So the first thing that came to my mind was which are they prioritizing now? Is this lives or is it um, we must be able to make a living? I understand the it's not an easy call, but I knew that um, the, we were not out of the woods yet. And so this, of course, would have to be treated with a lot of caution. Absolutely. Okay. Um, in terms of um, performance and management, uh, measurement, okay, how, will, how would you suggest that staff will be measured or evaluated during, um, during post-COVID? era or post lockdown era well how they will be valued so there's what we call the indispensable matrix so how indispensable are you um right now as, as we speak the world has become a much smaller place um you know, working from home has shown us that indeed even though it was may not have been planned for but indeed uh, more and more companies are realizing that a bulk of their staff can actually work remotely so I work remotely. It doesn't matter whether I'm working from Lagos, from Johannesburg, or from New York. Working remotely is working remotely. So if I am going to, as an employer, if I am hiring a staff, I have to be ensure that the staff I'm hiring can do the same kind of job or even much better than maybe a potential talent in Johannesburg or in, or in New York or in wherever it is. So staff will now be measured on a global scale. The bench has just been raised much higher. And so staff who come in thinking they can get by by just doing what is essential to get by will no longer have it easy for them. So in other words, there's a whole new ball game for performance management in, in post-COVID era. Okay. Right, okay. I was going to ask you about uh, skills that HR would be looking out for if they want to um, hire people post-COVID, but I think you've pretty much done justice to, to that. So another topic, uh, uh, issue I want to look at is lateness to work. Obviously, you listen to uh, the governor and the changes in transportation, um, um, not more than 60%, no vehicle at all is expected, expected to carry more than 50%. Now, mm -hmm. with the population of people in Lagos, I mean, there are other states, but let's look at Lagos and major cities. How, how is that going to affect um, punctuality to work? So, I, I don't think what the Lagos state governor was saying, or what the, I, I read it too, I don't think what they were saying was, um, this is the time you have to be, or rather that you cannot be work after this time. What they were saying, in other words, that they want us to, as much as possible as employers, encourage remote working. However, if it's totally essential that you have to be in the office, these are the periods when you have to be there. So it's not, it's not a total removal of the restrictions and movement. We're just in the phase where we're saying, look, we are going to lessen this restriction a bit more. And so we allow only essential staff to move around. 
Now, if you think about it that way, you realize that um, it's not a work as usual. It's no longer it's just normal um, resumption and closing periods. If you think about it, what will happen at this stage is that you will have more people being measured by performance about how many hours spent at work. I don't see this being a determinant of how employers will now determine whether staff was effective or not. It just doesn't make any good logic to determine my performance by my time at work. So working at home will still remain a major part of the post-COVID area. Okay. I so dare I say that it's yet to say, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Sage, based on what you've just said now, uh, what would be the effect? Because yesterday we were reviewing the aviation sector, and uh, you know, according to the research that was found, we found that a lot of jobs, you know, I, I think um, it's estimated that 20 million jobs will be lost in that um, sector because, of course, people are downsizing and all of that because they are the worst hit for this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Now, you are a HR personnel, right? Yeah. How would you think companies should approach um, laying off staff? Because it is inevitable. Right, there's really nothing some companies can do about, I mean, getting rid of some um, staff. So, how do you think is the best approach for them to do this? Well, so first of all, it has to be frank and open conversations going on. Um, for organizations that have unions, it's not going to be as easy as for organizations or or sectors that don't have that are not unionized. I think the first the first thing that the organizations or the management of those companies have to do is to have frank and open conversations. This is where we are now. This is what we can do. This is what we cannot do. Uh, we've been beaten hard by this. We have, if you think about aviation, for example, you can't have an aviation sector paying staff when they're not flying. So I understand that. And I think the staff will understand that too. But more importantly is how are you letting them know? What kind of conversations are you having with them to let them know what's happening? What kind of compensation are you planning for them? Maybe something that can tie them for three months, six months, all parts of your loss. But mm -hmm. then it has to be done. Otherwise, what we'll have is a rollover effect where uh, what's happening now will begin to roll over into different sectors. Once the panic sets in, people are afraid of losing jobs. It not only affects the sector that is affected, it rolls over into new sectors where the economy begins to down spiral. And before we know what's happening, it's dooms every day, everywhere. So yes, conversations have to be had, that has to be frank, and there has to be some level of compensation for those staff that are affected. So what was the best compensation that can be given to individuals or, or, or staff that have been laid off? What's the best severance package that can be given to them? Since you've talked about compensation for in, um, staffs. Well, so organizations usually um, do, in, in this kind of cases, usually do, um, some organizations to one month, which is the best practice. Our best practice would be at three months of of, um, of the full mind, salary. Right now, it's not salary. the usual best practice oh, based on what is happening post lockdown. It's not your fault. It's not the organization's fault. It's not um, the staff's fault either that they are being let go of. So, what would be the best severance package that could be given to them instead of a month? Three months, like, like I said, three months would be, would be good to have that kind of style of conversation. But besides the salary being planned, there should be some form of um, some talk. So some organizations will also organize some kind of um, life after retirement kind of talk where they can think about, where they can plan scenarios for you. What other things can you get into? What other skill sets can you use? So you, it's not just about the money. It's about the doom that the, the staff will feel. If you can offer some form of hope that this is not the end of the world, that life happens after that, that the staff can enable themselves to begin to, to dream again and live again, or to learn a new skill, but you have to be able to have those conversations and provide that kind of motivation for the staff to keep going, besides the, the economic, uh, economic um, conversation that you're providing for that staff. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, now um, we're looking at resuming work come Monday. What major changes do you see happening in the workplaces that would ensure the safety of the staff or people who can't afford to work home, like they really have to show up at work? What are the major changes uh, organizations should put in place to ensure their safety? 
Well, it's, it's a whole nine yards. Let's start with the transportation system. Um, we understand that some staff, or rather some organizations have staff buses. Usually the staff buses sit like four per row, depending on the type of staff bus. That has to change. That sitting an arrangement will have to change. That simply means that organizations that have staff coming in will either have to get more buses or make bus staff use more of their personal vehicles coming to work. And then again, the PPEs have to be worn at all times. Mm -hmm. It becomes a necessary work tool for anyone who will be working during this period from the mask to, um, um, to, to whatever, whether it's gloves that they're wearing or whatever it is that they have to have. Then the sitting arrangement. I think the gone are the days of the open office side by side sitting arrangement. Right. I think we will be seeing the entry of cubicles it may not be immediate, but that will definitely be happening. Where um, I, I don't know whether you've seen what with what happens in China with some of those cubicles that they have, little tiny cubicles where you sit in by yourself. Now, of course, that naturally means that chit chat is over. Um, organizations will uh, what will happen is that social distancing will take in, it will take a whole new different meaning. Um, so people will have to sit in cubicles. Um, also, we'll see a lot of remote working continue, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I, I think these are some of the things that must happen um, before we say we will resume with the minimum level of safety that measures put in place. Okay, so um, Osage, um. <clears throat> For staff, I have two questions, finally, if you can quickly answer them. For staff that are laid off, do they have the capacity to sue the company to say, you know what, um, I couldn't come to work and this happened and you laid me off? Do, are, they, are they legally bound to be able to sue the company? That's one. Then number two, is there a psycho, psycho, uh, what kind of psycho social support would you be recommending for companies to give to their staff that have these genuine fears? Because the affairs are valid. So what kind of psychosocial supports would you be recommending to companies? Well, so first of all, the first part where you ask about whether they can lead off will depend on the kind of contract that staff have signed. Some contracts have the element of force majeure um, in them where you say, I cannot be lead off even in the case of a force majeure. Um, I would say a pandemic if qualify under a force majeure. Some staff don't have that there. So it, it depends on the kind of contracts you signed. Um, whether you're laid off or not will depend so to the extent of what was agreed at your initial onboarding period. So we have to take that kind of that in a, on a case by case basis. We can't generalize. However, if a staff did have that sign a contract in his contract, that for what no whatever, no reason whatever can they be laid off even in the case of a force majeure? Yes, there they can be they can um, litigate against the company. Um, yes, second question you asked was what kind of measures can be put in place? Um, proactive companies have started what we call the employer assisted program, which is a wellness program for staff of um, organizations. It's, it's not so common in this part of the world in these climes yet, but it's quickly catching on, especially with organizations that are, are working in, with international best practice. The EAP, or Employer Assisted Program, as I talked about, is um, an emotional, psychological counseling part of the organization that looks at the, the, look at the, looks at the employee's well-being besides um, the work directly, things that are directly work-related. So that, that already begins to speak to the staff on how they feel on, on, on this issue. Um, currently, organizations are doing a lot of counseling during this period, getting experts, getting psychologists to talk to their staff, helping them to cope with anxiety and stress, working remotely and during this lockdown period. So if, if organizations that are not doing that already um, should begin to think about this, because the well-being of the staff, whether it's in the office or outside the office, affects productivity and profitability of any organization. So finally, what advice would you give to the worker now? So we've been talking about organizations. What, what's the, the, your advice to the staff that would be resuming work come Monday? Be prepared. Like the Boy Scout said, be prepared. <laughs> so many preparation is many things. Preparation is everything from your PPE, safety first. Make sure that when you get into the bus or whether you're driving your vehicle, you're, you're, you're safety conscious, you're, you're safety conscious. Two, understand that you're working in a world that has changed. 
significantly before, uh, significantly from what we had the last three to four months. So what's happening now is that your recruitment now be more online, your your ability to be remain relevant on the job, whether you're indispensable or not, like I, I called it earlier, the indispensability matrix will now determine whether you are the person that will be taken. You're now competing on a global platform. So what that simply means is that I can hire someone from New York to do the same job. Be prepared in all, in all ramifications. That's, that's my advice to the employee. Thank you so much. What a way right. to sum it up. Thank you for, <laughs> for joining us this evening. <laughs> and do stay safe, please. Thanks. All right, then. Thank you. All right, so all we'll right, take a short break. Uti Elu will join us right after. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.